Things you should never do to a woman, stoicism. Have you ever gone out of your way to make a woman happy, changing who you are, or giving up your own happiness? You're not by yourself. Many guys are in this situation because they think, wrongly, that this is the key to love and harmony. But what if I told you that there is ancient knowledge that tells you to do something different? I am, in fact, talking about stoicism. We're going to look deep into the heart of Stoic thought today to find six principles. You shouldn't give in to women, or anyone else for that matter. It's not about putting the blame on other people or telling you not to care about the women in your life. The opposite is true. To care for someone in a way that is healthy, kind to both of you, and eventually more satisfying, you need to learn how to do it. Think about this. Because she gave you a hint that she wanted to do something else, you changed your plans. Even though it hurt, you've changed your standards to fit hers. You might not have seen friends in a while because she didn't like them. It sounds like you. We want relationships that are healthy and balanced, but these situations don't lead there. They instead make it easy for anger and a loss of self to happen. Fear, on the other hand, can be a leading light. Let's talk about how to handle relationships that are complicated without losing yourself. Are you ready? We should start this trip together. 1. Giving up your freedom because you're passionate or want to please someone else. It's surprisingly simple to give up our freedom. You could change your plans. You were looking forward to putting aside your own hobbies or even changing your views to fit someone else's needs. It seems like love, but is it? Stoicism asks us to think about these sacrifices. Do we have to give up our rights in exchange for love? Or are we building a friendship where each person can thrive on their own? Take a look. Your honesty and freedom are worth a lot. They are the very core of who you are. You're losing more than just a part of yourself when you trade them for someone else's praise. You're also setting an unhealthy example for the relationship. According to Stoicism, bad relationships shouldn't be about losing oneself, but about growing together, respecting each other, and understanding each other. All of these things are based on the freedom to be oneself. Think about what you want before you bend your will to fit into someone else's world. Are you responding out of love and respect or because you're afraid and need to be liked? Are you giving up your own freedom? Remember that a friendship that is based on respecting each other's freedom and uniqueness is not only strong, it lasts. Let give up our valuable freedom for short-lived praise. Take a look at the timeless wisdom of Stoicism to help you find relationships that respect and enjoy our individuality. Who isn't paying attention to your growth? Take a moment to picture yourself on a road. Your road is like a forest that is full of the leaves of life's demands and expectations. Every step forward is a step toward becoming smarter, better, and finally good. Now picture stopping your own road all the time to walk someone else's putting their wants and needs ahead of your own. It's not just a side trip. It's keeping you from growing as a person. Epictetus would say that this is a bad use of our ability to reason and a failure to work on ourselves in relationships, especially when we find ourselves too focused on making our partner happy. This stoic lesson is very important to remember. Giving up on your own growth or always putting someone else's wants before your own can stop you from moving forward and make you lose who you are. They didn't say to improve yourself for your own benefit. They said to do it to make yourself and those around you better people. By not working on our own growth, we're not just stopping on our way, we're not giving our partners the best of ourselves either. In the end, how can we really make other people happy and healthy if we're not working on our own ethics and wisdom? Epictetus's teachings tell us that working on ourselves and becoming wise isn't something we do alone but something that makes our relationships and interactions better. Finding the right balance means making sure that while we're helpful and caring, we're not putting someone else's wants ahead of our own. 3. Keeping your feelings in check. Think about holding a beach ball underwater. When you push it down, it will pop back up with more force and often in ways you don't expect. Similarly, we're not fixing anything when we hide our feelings in order to keep the peace in a relationship. We're just putting off the eventual emotional explosion that will happen. This is not the way of a hermit. Stoics say that we should not deny our feelings, 
but instead should recognize them, understand them, and learn how to control them. It's not just bad to ignore your emotional needs or push your feelings down for the sake of a relationship. It can't go on forever. That makes you angry, causes confusion, and ends up cutting you off from both your partner and yourself. Stoics teach us to face our feelings head on, think about them logically, and talk about them in a healthy way. It has to do with finding the right mix between emotion and reason, so that neither one can take over. A big part of this mindset is communication. Being open and honest with yourself about how you feel is not a sign of weakness but of strength and self-awareness. In his meditations, Marcus Aurelius talked about how important it is to be honest with ourselves and think on all parts of our lives, even our feelings. He was very wise, Seneca, and he told us not to let our peace and happiness rest too much on outside things, like relationships. For fear of losing your independence, this doesn't mean we shouldn't value and care for our relationships with other people, but it does mean we shouldn't base our whole sense of happiness or self-worth on them. Think about the picture of a tree. It might tilt toward the sun. Enjoy the rain's benefits and even help other living things. Still, its roots and the food they get from the dirt are what make it grow, stay strong, and even live. When we depend on someone else for our happiness or sense of self-worth, we're like a tree that needs something outside of itself to stay stable. We could fall over if that source starts to shake. As Seneca warned, we should dig deeper into our roots and get our power and nourishment from within. Getting more independent doesn't mean cutting ties with other people or separating ourselves. Instead, it's about building a strong base within ourselves so that our connections are sources of joy and growth instead of chains or crutches. It means putting a lot of effort into our goals and hobbies and building a strong sense of self that can handle the changes and challenges that come with life. To be happy inside, we have to look inside ourselves, be honest, and sometimes have the strength to face our shadows. It's about being honest about our wants, fears, and dreams, and realizing that other people can help us get where we want to go, but they can't be our only way there. This inner peace gives us power, and it also helps our relationships. When we don't need someone else to fill our gaps, we interact with them from a place of fullness, not lack. 5. Making a promise to please her. Think about a situation in which you are asked to do something that goes against your personal views or interests. For example, you might act like you enjoy a sport that you really don't, or you might make decisions in your life that aren't in line with your values or goals. Stoicism teaches us how important it is to live in a way that fits with our own nature. This means being aware of and respecting our beliefs, principles, and things we like and don't like. We leave this road when we want someone else to be happy. We lose who we really are and the trust and respect that are at the heart of the relationship. Seneca, a Stoic philosopher, wrote beautifully about how each man must build and protect his own inner castle. This is a figure of speech for our core self, our morals and virtues. Giving up these things for short-term love or to escape conflict is like not guarding the gates to our fortress. Connections that last don't come from betraying yourself. They come from respecting and knowing each other's true selves. Finding common ground while staying true to yourself is what it's all about. Stoicism is not a hard way of life. It's a way of being deeply self-aware and honest. We should ask ourselves, is this action in line with my true self? Does it make me smarter, braver, more fair, or more moderate? If the answer is no, it means you need to stop and think. It serves as a lesson that love and respect both from ourselves and others grow when we are true to ourselves and not when we try to please others. Before you make a solemn promise, please think about the Stoic advice that says we should first honor our essence. It's not about being selfish. Self-respect is at stake. It has to do with making a connection where both people feel supported to be their best and truest selves. It doesn't change how much you love each other. It deepens it. Building a relationship that's not just about having fun in the present, but also about enjoying the short journey toward growth and understanding. Sixth, ignoring the reason for your passion. Imagine your relationship as your passion can be the wind in your sails propelling you forward with joy and speed. But if you don't have the direction of reason to guide you, that wind could blow you off course and hit the rocks. 
Stoics like Epictetus taught that our urges should not control our lives, but rather that we should be wise and plan ahead. This doesn't mean stifling our wants. It means getting to know them, asking questions about them, and making sure they fit with our bigger goals and ideals. When we're deeply in love, it's easy to let our feelings control what we do to find a middle ground. Does that go against what we believe? Or to miss warning signs that we would have seen if we weren't so passionate? The Stoics were very smart about this. They remind us that we should look at our feelings through the lens of reason. This way we can be sure that our actions and relationships are not just reactions to fleeting feelings, but decisions we make with clarity and foresight. This Stoic concept isn't just useful for dealing with disagreements or making big choices. It's also about the choices we make every day about the people we love. It's choosing to talk freely instead of reacting. Defense is just to be patient instead of angry and to try to understand before jumping to conclusions. By following reason in these times, we work to build a connection that is not only passionate, but also strong, respectful, and deeply connected. If you thought this video was helpful, please like, share, and follow for more philosophical advice and ways to grow as a person. Don't forget to share your thoughts or stories about stoicism and partnerships in the comments section below. Be good until we talk again.